Hello, this is Ryan from Amnesty, and I'm going to show you Kamehameha, or the Polynesians. The victory condition I'd recommend if you were to play them, their social policies, and also their two special units, or special unit and special building that you can build. So, they have wayfinding, which means you can embark and move over ocean tiles immediately, plus when site when embarked, 10% combat strength bonus if within two tiles of a MOE. I don't know how to really pronounce that word, to be honest. At any rate, um, what this essentially means is that you will be able to, if you're playing a continents map or even an Earth type setting map where everybody starts in Europe, you will be the person that will find everything first because you are able to just build a plain old trieme or whichever, any, any beginning boat, and you're able to go through the ocean before anybody else can. So this means that you'll find city-states before anybody else, you'll find natural well, natural wonders before anybody else, you also find many other things that are very useful to you, um, and you'll want to make sure you use that to your benefit, such as if you know that you are near an aggressive AI, you can just plant other cities near where luxury resources may be, or even strategic resources that you may not have, that way you can defend your capital if need be. Um, now plus one site when embarked, it is kind of nice around the end game if you find yourself in a lot of naval battles you'll have a advantage over some people but it's not that significant and then the 10 percent combat strength bonus if within two tiles of moe will pretty much just means if you build if your city's on a coast and then you build tons of moes around your city you'll gain a little bit of a defensive bonus for yourself, which which is ha handy, but that's more or less situational than anything else. So, as far as the victory conditions go, number one I'd recommend is culture. The Moe statu statues, if you, if you build a bunch all near each other, the more you have that are near each other, they keep generating more culture. With that being said, you can generate tons of culture even on the ocean area because of those Moe statues. It's very helpful. I definitely would recommend that one. Um, the other one I would recommend is a diplomatic victory. Staying along the coast can help to have an effect where other civilizations won't be pissed off at you. And then you'll meet city-states first in, the, in some map types as well. And that is very advantageous because you're the first one to meet them. You're able to fulfill their needs before anybody else. And if you go with a patronage tree, then you can have an up on anybody before anybody even meets them, which is huge. Um, and then expanding and choosing liberty plus patronage isn't bad if you believe you can win as well. And then another one that I'd recommend as well, to a lesser extent, is a scientific victory. Because you'll be along the coasts, if you are expanding and you choose the liberty track, you will have tons of cities. Those tons of cities, mixed in with the commerce track as well, will grant you tons and tons of scientific research. And then the last one is domination. I wouldn't recommend that one just because you get an early unit doesn't mean that you should use that early unit. Only in a situation where you feel as if you can conquer somebody early on and quickly, I would suggest to do so. But outside of that, he doesn't have any benefits towards combat. So your best bet is to stay away from that unless you feel as if you really can dominate the seas and it's plays that much of a role. Otherwise, that's about it as far as that goes. So now we'll show you the, the Maori warrior and the Moe statues. So the Moari warrior will cost you 40 production or 80 faith. It's a melee type unit. Its combat strength will be 8. Its movement will be 2. And then his ability will be Haka War Dance, which means that you have a... It's uh, basically a debuff on any enemy that you're near they'll receive a 10%, well, a negative 10% attack bonus against them. Essentially means that you get a 10% bonus to anybody that you attack. I know that these guys are also nice for defending because if you're near your Moe statues, if you've built them already, which chances are usually the both won't be combined, but if you have, you'll get a 20% attack kind of bonus against anybody, but that's very situational and chances are that won't really happen. Um, these units are very handy, taking over civs early, very early on, but usually you don't even find them before you're able to do so. So these guys are more or less good at taking out barbarians than anything else. 
And then more importantly, the Moe statue will give you one culture, but the more that you build um, together, the more culture you'll receive out of them. Um, with that being said, you'll kind of want to litter your coast full of these things, just for that reason, especially if you're going for a cultural victory. If not, then perhaps you may not want to do that, and perhaps if there's a something more important that you feel is if that's needed, I would replace it, but uh, Polynesian's best victory condition would be a cultural victory, and these statues help out greatly. And now I will show you the social policies I'd recommend if you were to play Polynesia. Before I talk about any social policies, I'll tell you about the Polynesian start bias. Now generally this is a, what you'll expect. Um, you'll be in grassland areas, some forests, sometimes you'll end up in the jungle, but you'll always, generally, always be near a coast. Um, if there's islands as a part of your game, normally you will be on an island, not so much a continent because they are an island type civilization. With that being said, you'll definitely want to branch out and take many coastal areas, islands, and that sort of thing. So, I will now talk about the social policy, and number one you'll want to go with is commerce. Now the first three is really up to you, it depends on what your play style is going to be, but I definitely would recommend commerce. This is more or less tied in with if you're going with the Liberty Track, because you'll expand, and then once you're expanded, be along the coasts and the commerce provides you more gold that are on the coasts and also provides you extra production plus three in all coastal cities generally all of your cities will be on the coast and then it'll also help out with harbors and seaports not so much with roads and railroads because again you'll be on the coasts you really won't have many of those um, and then any gold producing cities that have mints, markets, banks, or stock exchange, you'll have plus one science, so you'll also be a lot smarter in that regards. So you'll be smarter, you'll be spread out, you'll have your libraries and your gold producing buildings, which will give you science, which helps out relatively easy in a scientific victory. Um, and then if you wanted to go towards a cultural victory, you go with tradition and patronage and have those two, and you can easily, easily win a cultural victory. Um, and then it also kind of works in with diplomatic as well. And again, the lowest one I'd recommend is most definitely domination, just because you're just a flash in the pan with your unit. That's about it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please rate, subscribe, and comment, and watch my other videos. Thank you.